Uh, Assalamualaikum and good afternoon everyone. So beginning uh, today, we will use Microsoft Teams for our classes. So because I don't need to manually um, approve each and every one of you if you want to join the class. So using Microsoft Teams uh, it's easier for you to join our class. <laughs> okay, um, okay, don't forget to key in your attendance and also provide a name for your group. The link to the uh, spread, uh, Excel spreadsheet uh, is shared in the screen there. You can directly edit the the file by putting in your group name and if you want to modify uh, members of the group you can also do at the um, Google set Google spreadsheet and at the moment uh, there are two students who have yet to have a group. In our Excel, we have 53 students currently, and we have 55 students registered for this course. So if you know of your friends who have, have not uh, formed a group yet, please ask them to join any of the existing groups. Um, at the... <clears throat> <coughs> okay, um, <clears throat> so this is the, uh, if you open the link, okay, uh, if you open this link, it will, <coughs> it will get you to this page. This is a, uh, our Google spreadsheet that you used before to to edit or modify uh, members in your group. Um, please provide a group name okay, for each uh, group. Uh, please provide um, a name for your group. Uh, so it's easy for me to uh, call you by your group name. Okay. And so we have the eight group here, uh, only have two members. So I would suggest that um, for those who are in the in this eight group to join the other groups. So for example, we have um, two more slots here for group number six. We have one slot here for group number five. So you can contact any of the uh, on any of the uh, existing group members if you want uh, to be inside the group. Okay. Um, because I think seven groups should be enough. So eight, uh, maximum eight. Okay. Um, so seven times eight is fifty-six. So we should have enough uh, groups for all members. <coughs> Right. Um, okay, later, uh, after our lecture, we will um, discuss about your Sulam project. Okay. So this is the third week. We need to present uh, your proposal on week five, where you will be evaluated okay, during week five. Uh, for your presentation. So that will be later, uh, later today. So in the meantime, um, please um, uh, find a potential uh, collaborator that you want to work with. And I will uh, let you know what are the uh, queries that, that I have received and maybe uh, would benefit uh, the rest of it. Okay? Uh, the, the do's and the do's. 
Um, before we proceed further, we would like to um, to revise what we have learned uh, last week. Okay. Um, so you know the drill. So please um, open. Uh, if you have the Kahoot app or here using this website. <coughs> Um, and key in this game pin. Okay. So the um, the Kahoot will be on whatever that you have learned uh, last week. Okay. So please go to uh, Kahoot and join this game using this pin. So Kahoot uh, plays a uh, Halloween theme mm -hmm. music. I'm not sure if you can hear the music. Um, I think you can, right? Can you hear? Can you hear Kahoot's music? So I'm assisted by my assistant today. So she will assist me in the class. <laughs> Uh, can, can you guys hear the music? Can you hear the music? It is... Okay. Okay. Right, uh, so come on, we have we have forty seven, forty seven uh, participants. I hope everyone can join. Um, so we're going to start soon. Questions will be based on um, last week's lecture. Yeah, mommy. Mommy. Mm. <laughs> that, uh, right, I think uh, that's it from here. Yeah, I think that should be a good one. Okay. Start three, two, one. Okay, uh, what's the title? See it in the first slide of our first lecture. What's, what's the title written there? If you can remember or if you are currently opening the slide. So, therefore, for you see. <laughs> okay, um, 
Okay, the, 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 the topic is about verbal communication, but the actual title that is written in the slide is actually all communication. So this, this, this has nothing to do with uh, uh, the oral being different from verbal, it's just uh, whether you notice that or not. Okay, so the actual, if you open up the slide, it's actually oral communication. Uh, so, Nothing okay, um, touch is a form of communication. Uh, I hope everyone get this right. Yeah, so it's a form of um, non-verbal communication actually. So touch is a form of uh, communication as well. Mm. Right. Okay, what about gestures? Uh, gestures uh, also a form of communication as well. Mm, yeah, of course. So gestures are also a form of non-verbal communication. So, uh, so for example, if you um, do a gesture like uh, this sign or this sign, yeah. so it means it means something to the person that you're communicating with. Um, excuse the noise that you hear. Okay. Um, okay, um, 80% of the message depends on what? Uh, what you hear and the words being said. Uh, the actual words being said, what you hear and what you see, what you see and the words that are being said. So this is one of these. Uh, so, according to information from the slide, okay, um, the majority of the message comes from what you hear and what you see, and not on the actual words that were being uttered by the, the person who uh, his thoughts or his opinion. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, not examples of various communication flows. Which are the following? Are not examples of um, various communication flows. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Okay. Uh, yeah, so receiver is not uh, a barrier. So when you communicate, you have the sender and the receiver. So cultural differences, noise, uh, for example, the noise that you're hearing uh, at the moment. Uh, generation gap are all barriers to the uh, communication problem. Uh, I hope you can hear me. You can hear me, right? Yes, can you. Okay. Okay, uh, communication channel include non-verbal, written, and electronic methods. So are these um, examples of a communication channel? Okay, uh, you know Yeah. So channel is the method of of delivery of your message. It can be through non-verbal, through oral, through written, uh, anything that you've written or via electronic means. So these are our uh, channels. Okay, a speech normally consists of what? Okay, eight, seven, 
Six, one, zero messages. Three, two, one, zero. Okay, those are. Um, intro uh, messages. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So if you look at the look at the format, uh, the spelling of uh, 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 the <laughs> so it's actually message, okay, not massage. Okay, then you take photos and help. Uh, uh, don't be too quick to answer. Okay. Uh, when you want to answer something, it, it, at first it may seem to be correct, but if you look at it properly, it's not correct. Okay, I have uh, the question. <coughs> okay. Uh, first. Uh, okay or not to read your speech, but still maintain okay. eye contact with the audience. Okay, I want okay, to okay say to read your speech, uh, but. At the same time, maintaining okay, eye contact with uh, your audience. Okay. Uh, oh my, oh yes. Um, because sometimes um, you need to read certain parts which which cannot be uh, misread. So you want to read a statement properly, so you can still read your speech. But uh, at the same time, try to maintain eye contact with the audience. And now I have it on the seat. And you are happy to see you have it. And you have it here. All right. Uh, is it okay to be nervous before you speak publicly? Is it okay to be nervous when you speak publicly? Uh, of course, it's okay to be nervous. Uh, everyone feels nervous. You just need to control. Um, you just need to control it, okay. Okay. Um, rather than let it consume you uh, before enjoy, you speak public. Enjoy. Okay. okay. Uh, is it okay to speak class play a moss? This is a bonus question. <laughs> so, um, uh, so I so I so this I mean, one person I I can't play. Yeah. Hi, I'm the real self this year. I'm oh, 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 oh. Avoid memorizing the entire speech. Is it? So we avoid memorizing an entire speech. Uh, yeah. So, because if you forget some lines, it may disrupt your entire speech. If you don't actually, um, you don't actually, um, what's called that? Menghayati, menghayati your speech, but instead you just memorizing the speech. So, if you I have to get the line, you may interrupt your speech. speech so, if possible, and avoid memorizing the entire, entire speech. That's why you said that. All the pressure. But is it okay to memorize a quotation or an opening paragraph? So you may uh, prepare an opening that may catch the attention of your audience. So is it okay to memorize this? Thing? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. okay. So these are not entire uh, speech. It just contain a minor part of the speech. So uh, certain things. For example, quotation. Uh, it needs to be a correct quotation. An opening paragraph, you may intend it to have. Uh, you may want an intended effect. So that's why you memorize uh, the opening paragraph. Okay. Okay, one question. Okay, last question. The last one, if the you're reading a technical information, so you can you read your speech but maintain eye contact? 
Mm, of course, so if you are reporting the number of cases, uh, COVID-19 cases, for example, you don't want to, be, you don't want to provide um, um, wrong information, right? So, so there are technical jargons involved, okay. you may uh, want to read this okay. uh, Yeah. yeah. So I want to eat the pad and pass the YouTube button. Okay. So the podium. We have the. So who's who's me? Oh, W I E. Ah, uh, this is me. And the winner is Forty Four Two. I don't want to say the word. So who who is? Can you type your name? 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 Can you type Saiful, right? Okay, Saiful. Because we almost here now. Um, okay. 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 Um, no pass on your seat now. We almost to landing. Oh. Okay, to the uh, winners of oh. all the kahoots. Okay, I will take notes of who you are. And they may and you may receive some kind of uh, reward uh, later. I and now will, let's go out. Uh, let you know later, lah. Okay. Okay. All right. So we have another one. So apart from um, uh, apart from the um, join this next one. So the first one was on um, verbal communication. So this is for uh, a different topic. Yeah. Okay. So number of questions. Uh, we only have eight questions for this topic. So these are all examples of non-verbal communication. Eye contact, facial expression, and speaking. These are all examples of non-verbal communication. Okay. 
Okay. Says false. Because the statement says all. Left one. Um, so everything there oh needs God. to be non-verbal. So speaking is a verbal type of communication. So eye contact and facial expressions, of course, are, are non-verbal. But since the statement says all, so the statement is important. Uh, did you learn logic? Uh, I'm not sure. Um, so, yeah, so we have and, uh, so all, or things like that. Um, so be careful of these statements, okay? uh, especially when you're answering um, uh, technical question or uh, interview question. Okay, um, true or false? Um, how you dress is a type of non-verbal communication. Okay. Is it true that how you dress uh, conveys some information? Um, yeah, okay. it can be it's a, uh, a type of non verbal communication. Okay, you open up the slide. And right, pass on um, your seatbelt. And the plane is how dress is uh, a type of non verbal communication as well. For example, in the West, if you're attending a funeral, uh, normally people would wear, uh, for example, their okay. funeral the or Tony uh, Stark, okay, where you see all of these friends. Uh, wearing uh, dark colored clothes. Okay, okay. Hi, thank you, sister. We almost to landing. Okay. Okay, what is the study of how we handle this, the space around us? Is it, uh, sorry, that's supposed to be orientation. Is it orientation, parallel language, proxemics, or something? Space calling. Uh, it's actually from Sam. Sam is ready to go. Space psychology is something that I made up actually. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> don't know that you guys uh, fell for that, but yeah. But it's actually proxemics. Proxemics is the study of how we handle the space around us. Uh, I'm not sure what space psychology means. It's just a made up word. So it, there's a definition to that. I Google it. I, I, I don't see a, a proper definition. Uh, but it's proximate. Light clothing and the moon and the cover thing is closed. Okay, true or false? A gesture means the same in every situation. For example, if you have a gesture like this, it means the same anywhere, anytime. So it's false. Okay. Okay. Um, red is better seen. The red is so what does this mean? What does the this gesture mean? The lemon candle. The lemon candle. The lemon candle. Good, yeah. Any other answer? Apart from good? Any answer? I'm falling and I'm promised to go. Up. We are supposed to go to middle. Okay. Let's see. To the middle. Oh, like this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Pass on your seatbelt. Uh, Left okay. and right. Uh, anyone have been uh, scuba diving before? Anyone here? Um, uh, <laughs> no. So if you're scuba diving, if you show a sign like this, okay. If you want to mean good. Uh, don't don't do it because this means that you want to go up. Okay? Uh, the city sign means that you want to go up when you scuba diving. Uh, if you say everything is okay, it's like this. Okay, so this means uh, this means okay. So it does. Gesture does not mean the same in every situation. It may 
differ based on the activities that we perform, uh, maybe cu uh, culture. So it's not the same. Yeah, has it Okay, uh, fifth question. Staring may be a threatening form of eye contact. Staring. Staring. Um, yeah, so it's a bit, it, it will make people un uncomfortable if you just stare and stare at someone. Yeah, it may be a threatening form of eye contact, okay, apart from you wanting to uh, ignore that person. Okay, um, it may be threatening and, and almost here now it's and on the track and uncomfortable thing to that particular person. Right. True or false? It's possible to detect that someone is smiling when talking over the phone. So if you're talking to somebody over the phone, uh, is it possible to detect whether the other person is actually smiling or not? Uh, it's true, we have tested it last week, although only with a single person. Um, if you say something with a smile, it, it gives a different tone to your... Uh, it actually gives a slightly different tone to your voice. So you, you, you can try it yourself. Uh, say something to yourself while you're smiling. And maybe saying something to yourself while you not smile. So there is uh, it's uh, no expression at all. So some people are able to detect this. And last week we have done it, and uh, most of you were able to, to detect. It. Okay, uh, address can used to mean the role of a person performs. It does address. Uh, we know that address is a form of communication, but can it signify the role that the person performs? Uh, true, if you're wearing a police uniform, so people would expect that you're a policeman, okay, so that's why um, uh, a, a uniform reflects uh, the role that the person performs. Um, like a chef, okay, a chef would wear his own attire. So it would signify uh, the role that the person does. Okay, the last question Intonation, pitch, and speed of speaking are examples of what? Dialect, parasaurolophus, parallel language, or the last one. Aduh, siapa jawab tu para para sakura tu? Nah, sebut parasaurolophus. Parasaurolophus. Yeah, can you guys can you guys pronounce parasaurolophus? Is that? Sebut parasaurolophus. Parasaurolophus. I challenge you to pronounce Parasaurolophus. So Parasaurolophus is actually a uh, name of a dinosaur. Okay. Parasaurolophus, in, at first, is difficult to pronounce. <laughs> yeah. The so Parasaurolophus is a type of dinosaur, so yes, those who still pick that name. You know what Para Parasakura is? Okay. The Para Para Sakura is the name of a movie that stars Aaron Kwok. Okay. So this is Para Para Sakura, name of a movie. Okay. Uh, 
I think, I'm not sure, maybe one year old during this time, or maybe just born. Um, okay. Okay, uh, for non verbal communication. I <laughs> see. Hazikurus is the. Is it different from the Hazik? This is not the Hazik that we know of, is it? Is it different Hazik? And we here now, yeah. Cairo has it, right? Then, where has it in it? Do we have a different has it? Or the one and only has it that is who's? Ada hari yang lain ke? The one and only? Okay, one and only has it. Thank you. Fit guy. Top and PKP. Hmm. Okay, we have another one. So I separate them into topics okay, for for me to use my teacher classes. So I hope you can bear with me because we uh, last time we there there were four topics last time. This is on listening skills. Listening skills. <laughs> 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 So it's on listening skills. So if you are genuinely interested to understand the other person's point of view and checking for our understanding, so what type of listening is this? Is it competitive listening, uh, combative listening, passive listening, or reflective listening? So it's um, reflective listening okay? because you're checking for your understanding. Okay, so apart from being um, generally interested to understand the other person's point of view, you're also checking for your understanding with that particular person. Okay? You ask questions or you uh, paraphrase things like that. 
Mm. So it's reflective listening. Uh, active listening is also called what? Passive listening, attentive listening, reflective listening, competitive listening. So active listening is also called what? So active listening is also called reflective listening. So the same definition given to you in the previous question. So that is also called active listening. So you listen to, to the other person and then you really want to know what's going on by asking questions okay, uh, to see whether you're understanding the other person's point of view correctly or not. True or false, passive listening is attentive listening. Passive listening. Is it the same as attentive listening? Uh, yes, passive listening is attentive listening. So you general in general you're interested you know the other person's point of view but you rarely speak you, you re rarely want uh, to check you understand so even though you don't understand something so you just let it be uh, left to your your own interpretation and maybe you really want the other person to stop speaking or something like that yeah. Competitive listening is also called combative listening. Okay, is it true or false? Competitive listening is combative listening. Uh, it's true. So competitive listening basically you just okay. you don't really want to hear so what the other person is talking about, but you're waiting for the moment to say your piece. Okay. You basically you you you're not interested to hear whatever the other person uh, is going to say. So the important thing is what you want to say. Okay. So that's competitive listening. Mm. Okay, true or false? Uh, cross wires. Okay, so when people get their wires crossed, it means that they have a different understanding of the same situation. Uh, so, so when you say that. Um, two person got okay. their wife's cause, it means that they have a different um, understanding of the same minutes So what you question. mean, uh, you may mean A, but the other person uh, thought that you were referring to B. Okay. So one person may thought that you were referring to the um, um, to the uh, to the COVID-19 case, for example, okay. uh, you may thought that they were referring to Najib Razak's case, for example. Okay. Um, so you, you're not in the same way for the um, same thing, the court case, but uh, people may think that it refers to a different case. Okay, um, okay, it's good, all, it is good to always repeat back the words verbatim to ensure accurate understanding of uh, a particular message. Um, false. 
Okay, uh, if you repeat back the words, um, it's like being a parrot. Okay? Uh, note, note the use of the word always. Okay? Uh, if you always do that, okay, it, it may seem annoying as well. Okay? You, you're repeating whatever the other person is saying. But occasionally, okay, occasionally you may repeat the words of verbatim. To check your understanding. If, uh, if both statements seem clear and you really want a confirmation that you don't uh, yes. misheard, uh, you don't misheard. Okay, for example, someone say that um, warm water can cure COVID 19. Okay, and you just repeat what? Warm water can cure COVID-19. That one occasionally, occasionally you can uh, do that. But if you always repeat back what the other person is uh, saying, okay, verbatim, okay, verbatim, meaning that word by word. So it may be an annoying thing to do. And by the way, drinking uh, warm water does not cure you from COVID-19. Okay. Um, Okay, when listening to someone face to face, it's okay to always see at the phone and uh, all surrounding. I think it's a common sense question. Just to emphasize that it's not okay. okay? Um, okay, it's not okay. Uh, not on the use of the word always. Eh? Okay. So you always look at the phone or surroundings and listening to the other person, then um, it would seem as insulting to the other person. Or it shows it's something I think a, a disrespectful thing to do. The other person. See? Um, pay attention when someone is speaking to you, and don't do things that are uh, that seems um, I'm com I'm comfortable to the other person. Okay, for listening skills. Right, so we have Azhan. Mm, Azhan Farhan, is it? Yes. All right. Okay, so that was a different, different person got podium for different topics. Okay, All right. Congratulations. Mm, Azhan. So uh, I hope that you are a very good listener. I hope that you are a very good listener. All uh, right. Okay, when you think that it's going to be over, mm, there's actually one last. So, this is the last one. Yeah, I promise you. <laughs> we have four topics last week. This is the last Kahoot for the day. Um, so last couple of the day, so please, please join this one. Please join this one. Thank you. 
Jadi jelas. Oke. Okay. Uh, on presentation um, it's important to know your audience before delivering a talk. Is it important to know your audience before uh, delivering a talk. Yeah. Um, and Sarani, yeah, thank you. So, of course, it's important to know your audience before delivering a talk. So, you know their level of knowledge, whether you want to explain something in general or more general setting or if you want to if the people consist if the audience consists of technical people you may want to um do a technical talk so that's why it's important to know your audience so is it, uh, school kids okay? is your audience um people from the government so all these things would help you to to deliver your presentation. Okay, if you want to uh, do an informative talk, okay, focus on a narrow subject. True or false? Focus on a, on a narrow subject if you want the talk to be informative. Yeah, if you focus on something that is specific, so at least people will get um, some kind of information from the talk. Okay. For example, uh, if you're talking about COVID-19, okay. if, if the talk goes like this, um, COVID-19 happens um, all around the world. Okay. It happens in Malaysia, it happens in the United States, it happens uh, in our neighboring countries, uh, so the end. So that's that is a very uh, generic uh, talk. It does not convey any meaningful um, or informative um, um, uh, talk to the to the audience. Okay. Mm. Okay, um, true or false? It's totally fine to laden your talk with lots of jokes. So if you have lots of jokes, you want to laden it with your talk. Meaning, uh, put the jokes heavily, okay? incorporate the, the jokes heavily into your talk. Uh, false. So if your talk uh, has more jokes than whatever information that you're trying to convey okay so people may think that are you going to replace Harith Iskanda or are you going for uh, audition for Maharaja Lawa or something okay so it's fine to if you have jokes you try to minimize it okay. there's, there's lots of jokes uh, you may want to be a comedian or you may want to be a stand-up comedian like Harris and Sanda. True or false? Putting a lot of information in a single slide Uh, it is a recommended approach. So you have lots of information, you put it in a single slide. Um, 
Is it a recommended way to deliver your talk? No. So if you have a lot of information, if you put everything in a single slide, that would be, uh, it may be an information overload to the audience. Imagine putting the history of the world in a single slide. So um, it's not. If you have, you know, try. It's better for the audience to know at least one or two things, uh, rather than you know not not getting anything from the talk. So if you have lots of, if you have lots of information. Um, try to separate them into different slides, uh, but don't put in a single slide. That would be too much. It's best to read your slides from start to finish. So if you have um, statements in your slides, Okay, you read them word by word from start to finish. Is it the best? Best way? Of course, it's not. In your two main main time, yeah. So, if you read your slides from start to finish, people may think that is it a reading class? Okay, is it a reading class? Okay, you read every single word on your slide from start to finish. Okay. Um, kalau nak mengajar orang membaca, that is fine. Okay. If you're teaching somebody to read, that is fine. But if you just read, the audience can read too. Okay. Um, so your audience boleh membaca juga. So jangan baca slide word by word from start to finish. That is Mengajar orang membaca. Uh, because there are cases, uh, I actually witnessed um, whatever information there, they just read the slides. So it's not, people can read slides. Okay? Um, then why are you presenting? So you, when you present, you putting in extra information apart from what is uh, written on the slide. Basically. Mm. Okay, speak in a fast way so that you can cover a lot of points in a small amount of time. So if you have... Um, uh, false, of course, is false. Um, speaking uh, in a very fast way, um, so unless you are quicksilver, uh, even quicksilver talks in a normal way. Okay. Um, so speak in a relaxed way, um, not um, not in a um, not in a fast way. The people may not be able to understand you. Okay, use a monotonous tone when delivering a presentation. Okay, uh, when delivering a presentation, just use a single tone um, when delivering your presentation. Uh, false, of course. Uh, monotonous means that uh, you speak in a um, without any emotion, okay. um, just a single tone. So people may think, "Ada orang mati ke?" Is someone dying? That you use a monotonous tone in your talk. You okay. so try lighten up the talk a bit by using different. Um, uh, different uh, tone, like for example, when you want to emphasize, when you want to emphasize on a point, okay, um, so don't be monotonous. A single tone, 
um, it would be a very boring uh, presentation. Okay. Right, for presentations here. So, G so who's GP? So who is this person going by the name GP? Can you reveal yourself? Uh, Guanpo, I hope you would deliver a fantastic uh, presentation later. Okay. During your presentation week. Okay, uh, so it's not too difficult. <laughs> okay, um... And just so I'm going to record this. Okay, all right. So this week's lecture is about barriers to communication. So don't look at the week six there is slide taken from the previous session. So I'm just gonna uh, briefly go through the slides and then later we'll talk about your Sulam project. <laughs> okay, um, so these are examples of barriers to communication. When you trying to communicate with somebody. Okay. Um, so these are examples of things that may interrupt the communication process. Yeah. Yeah. For example, noise. Um, okay. uh, like my daughter here. Okay, so the words that you use, with be it technical, uh, if you use a lot of technical jargon and then speaking to somebody from uh, party at the kampong. Okay, so it may be, it may create a barrier. Okay, okay so, so you can read this, uh, this slide and go through briefly uh, one by one is one. Okay, noise, um, this is uh, normal. Sometimes you're speaking at an environment where there's too loud, too loud of a music. So I've been to a wedding where the music was very loud and difficult to speak even to the next person, uh, the person next to me. So when you want to, so inshallah after, uh, when you get married later, okay, in the next few years, uh, if you want to uh, do a wedding ceremony, don't put the music too loud, you think. Um, okay. Um, okay. People want to converse, okay, in a, in a, in a, in a ceremony like that. Okay, not, uh, it's not a concert. Okay. So, a wedding is not a concert. So where you put very loud music, um, so um, tone down the music a bit. Okay. Um, right. Word wall includes, like I mentioned, you use technical terms to, to describe something. 
to a person that does not have that particular background. Okay. And sometimes you choose um, words that are uh, bombastic to make yourself look um, I'm not sure. Um, to impress somebody, basically. So you want to impress somebody, so you use these very uh, changing words. Okay? Um, but if you can, if the vocabulary that you choose cannot be understand, understood by your audience or the person that you're speaking with, then uh, why bother? I mean, so choose your vocabulary, vocabulary with care, so depending on uh, the audience that or the, or the person that you're talking with. Okay. Mm, yeah, speak to communicate, never to impress. Okay, mm. okay overload. So overload um, is also an issue as well, too many information. Um, so if you provide too many information to a particular person at the same time, Especially if the information is very new to that person, then um, people won't understand a thing. Okay, so, um, it's, so that's why it's, uh, it's crucial to know who you're speaking with, uh, if you know their background, okay, um, to avoid overload of information. Dialogue cutoff, like what my daughter has demonstrated, Okay, um, so when you're speaking and then uh, she cut off my uh, my sentences, so that is also an example of barriers of communication. Okay. Let the others finish their sentences first before you speak. That's the more uh, proper way to converse. Stereotyping is you generalize a group of person, maybe this person belongs to a particular group and you, you have a generalization about this particular group and then you apply that generali generalization to that particular person. Okay, so if you have this kind of um, mentality, it may be a barrier of communication as well. Okay. especially negative uh, stereotyping. Okay. For example, this particular group um, from this political party okay, is like this, and this person is from that particular political party, then um, uh, so you, you generalize this, this thing. So, so avoid um, doing negative stereotyping on a uh, group. Group of person. Um, okay, this is um, you may have a hidden agenda. Okay. For example, you may want to be the next prime minister of the country. Okay. Um, so that's an agenda. But unfortunately, that is not hidden. Uh, it's a visible agenda. So that. Okay, that maybe does not come. So a hidden agenda, um, something because it's hidden, so we don't know what is actually hidden. Okay, um, um, so if you, for example, um, like to lie to people, so people may uh, may have less trust in you. It's related to the next point, which is distrust. Okay, um, so be honest when communicating. I think honesty is the best policy. Um, uh, avoid um, cheating or uh, um, um, avoid telling lies to other people. Basically, I think these these things are. I think everybody knows this, but sometimes we lie um, because we want to protect something. Okay. 
Okay, gains is related to um, it's either you win or you lose. Okay. okay for example, in an argument, uh, if you're into an argument with a particular person, okay, uh, you're arguing who is the next the suitable candidate for to be our next prime minister, okay, for example. So if one person stops speaking, okay, then the other person may uh, would. Uh, think that that person, that particular person loses and he won because he, that person uh, uh, was not interested to speak anymore. Okay. So, uh, if you're thinking of, um, if you want to win in every, uh, in every argument, okay, so that is also a, bar a barrier to communication as well. Okay. Uh, semua dia betul lah, basically. Okay. Um, orang lain semua salah. Okay. Right, uh, next. Okay. Okay. So this is the communication path, the uh, basic communication path. So you have a thought in your mind. Okay. For example, I want to be the next prime minister. Okay. For example, your thought at the moment is you want to be the next prime minister. And the construction is how you want to convey your thoughts, okay, either to uh, uh, oral, uh, oral statement or written statement. And then how you want to deliver your thoughts. It may be through a press conference at Le Meridian Gale. Okay. So that's uh, one method of delivery okay. um, uh, via uh, press conference at Le Meridian Hotel. And then reception, how people would uh, receive it, how then how people would translate and understand that particular thought that you were um, sending. Okay. Okay. For example, the thought uh, you may you may have, um, uh, people may think you want to play games or you want to deceive people, okay? And then during delivery, okay, next. Uh, when you want to deliver your message, okay, there may be noise or, or too many technical jargon that you use, um, and people just always cut off whatever that you're trying to say. So that's uh, examples of barriers as well. Okay. And then uh, when the other person uh, receives your message, noise and dialogue cut off also play a role in uh, as one of the barriers of communication. Okay. And when people want to translate and understand your message, okay, there may be too many information that prevents them from um, really understand, really understand your message. For example, the message is you want to be the next minister. So that I think that message is clear. Um, so that's one example of uh, communication. Communication. Right next. Okay, um, so you're gonna do a group assignment for this course. Okay, so we go through uh, the skills that um, that may be required in a group. Okay. okay, when you're leading the group. You need to be able to coordinate the activities. Okay, for example, the Sulam project that you're going to uh, conduct, and then uh, you need to be able to think. Um, you need to, to to be able to handle the group. Okay? How the group work together. Now, uh, since everyone is at their home, you you can't physically meet, so that's also a challenge to those uh, who are the leaders for, 
for the group. And members also need to play their role. Okay, they need to be uh, able to be part of the group. Okay, um, contribute ideas, suggestions um, for the group to move forward. Okay, um, it's not easy to work in a group. Now, especially everyone is you know, physically in um, different places. Okay, um, so next, these are the typical skills required or the uh, typical roles played by uh, those in, in a group. Okay? The roles um, that typically appear uh, when you're working in groups. Right, uh, task function, next. Task roles basically refer to the action that individuals, uh, sorry, uh, refer to the actions of individuals that help move the project, decision, and task. So these uh, people, they help to move the project. Okay. Um, for example, initiating. So if you don't start the project, then Sampai kiamat, maybe the project has not, will not start. Okay, so somebody needs to initiate the project. Okay. So what are you going to do? Uh, so when are you going to do it? Okay. Um, so that's initiating. So when are you going to meet uh, uh, online? Okay. To, to do a meeting. And then there's also a role uh, of a devil's advocate. A yeah, devil's advocate, basically, uh, this particular person would ask challenging question or provoking question that would allow the group to think outside of the box. Okay. It may seem as the bad guy in the group, but sometimes it's also important for somebody to play uh, the devil's advocate. Okay. Asking... Um, uh, provoking questions, um, challenging questions to the group for them to think. But don't do this always. Uh, it would be annoying as well because you... Because you... It, 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 it's, uh, it would be annoying as well. If you just, you know, uh, pro ask provoking questions but without providing you yourself, uh, without you yourself, providing any kind of uh, possible solutions to the question that you pose. Okay. All right, next. So maintenance uh, function or maintenance roles refer to the action of individual that help preserve the relationships in a group. So in a group, of course, you're working with um, many people. So there are people who will play the maintenance role to ensure that the relationship in the group is uh, at a good level. For example, encouraging, being friendly, uh, being warm, being responsive to others, okay? uh, accepting their ideas, accepting their contribution. Okay? Um, and then, for example, gatekeeping. Gatekeeping is basically helping to keep the communication channels open. Okay. Gatekeeping uh, are those who help to keep the communication channels open. So you don't want you don't want certain people from dominating the discussion. Okay. So you may um, ask a different person that question so that other people may may provide their opinion. So no so there's no one single person that would dominate uh, the discussion, for example, and if there's someone who's um, who uh, is totally silent in the discussion, you may ask this particular person if he has any opinions that he may want to raise. <clears throat> um, right. So housekeeping is basically tasks related to 
um, it's not it's not the main uh, uh, purpose of the work that you're doing um, but it still needs to be done yeah. um, it needs to be done that's that's housekeeping Um, for example, if you have, um, uh, for example, if you need to um, to be at a particular booth, okay. Um, so during last time, last time, who is going to ensure that um, you know uh, the the appropriate people would, would finish their lunch by the allocated time, okay, uh, things like that. Okay. So personal functions mostly are related to oneself, to individual, for them to um, um, to for them to play a role in the group that they are uh, they are in. Okay. So, for example, active listening, okay. um, understanding others. To avoid disruptive behaviors, uh, so recognizing somebody if he's he has done uh, uh, but that's but that's uh, maintenance function. Okay. Recognizing someone uh, for contributing, so that's maintenance function. Personal function related to uh, mostly to to, to individuals. But these two roles, maintenance and tasks, are typically discussed uh, um, as the roles that people play when in a group. Okay. Okay, um, so any so any question? Any question for barriers to communication? So there's no um if there is no question. So we're going to look at the uh, format of the report that you that you're going to prepare. So this is the uh, proposal template. It's available on Spectrum, so you can download this template uh, at Spectrum. So these are the uh, information that you need to include in your proposal. Um, so an overview, collaborator, who's you, who uh, the party that you are engaging with, the target group. Okay. Um, for example, if you are collaborating with the school, so the target group would be uh, school kids. The problems that or needs that that have been identified um, by uh, you discussing with the collaborator and um, you discussing with the collaborator, okay. and it is a problem or needs by the target group or the collaborator, and the objectives. Okay, what you plan to do, what you plan to achieve um, during the uh, execution of the project. So that's your objective. And what you want to do. Okay, uh, so each objective may have one or more activities, or one activity may contribute to the achievement of one or more objectives. Okay, you may have, for example, three objectives. So the first objectives may require you to do two activities, for example. Okay. 
And the second and the third objectives um, may be related to just one single activity. So if possible, you need to relate the objectives and also the activities that you're going to propose. And then uh, point number seven, uh, list out the, the group members and each of their role and the expected outcome of the project and what's the impact of the project that you uh, that you plan to conduct on the society and also on the target group on the society at large and also on the target group uh, timeline for the project so you can use a gun chart for this purpose and then you end it with a uh, conclusion okay, so the details you can read the details um, further down the, this template. Okay. Um, uh, sorry, the group. Okay, the, the impact on society. Uh, okay. So what's the impact to the target group or the society that you uh, that you engage with? And what is the impact to your own group? Uh, what's the impact of the project to your own group? Okay. So whatever impact uh, that you have, so put it in this particular section. How many pages um, so far? There's no limit on the number of pages, but don't don't make it like a um, novel or uh, I mean uh, put uh, enough information, sufficient information for the reader to understand your proposal. Okay, not too lengthy, not too short. So whatever information, uh, I would prefer a short report. I would prefer a short report, but it is concise. So all the information is there. Uh, I don't like wordy, wordy reports. Like once upon a time, there's this one, and then the sun shines, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, <laughs> so reduce the amount of flour in your reduce the amount of flowery um, decorations in your um, paragraphs. Okay. Um, I like statements that are straight to the point. Okay, that are straight to the point. So to answer your question, um, so there's no definite um, so as well, there's no uh, definite limit on the number of pages, but please ensure that whatever information that you put in your proposal is sufficient for people to understand your proposal. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay if there's any questions, please ask. And so far, there are. Um, a few persons who have already approached me to ask whether uh, their project is a go or not, whether their project is suitable or not. Okay, I will try to I will try to recap. I will try to recap. Uh, okay, um, if possible, approach um, a community based. Um, association or uh, body. Mm. Because um, there's one um, question I received previously uh, that the group uh, plans to uh, conduct a data entry or entry data entry uh, work but it's it's voluntary actually so according to the description according to the description 
Okay, for example, this particular project, okay, um, is a data entry thing, but it's volunteer basis. Yeah, it's volunteer, but it's something, the work is something that, um, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, basically the uh, organization just want of to me um, free free labor, um, so if you just do the data entry, data entry to me it, it seems uh, it, it seems that it benefits more to the company than than you as a group, so. If possible, um, if their work um, published by a particular body that asks you to do data entry, the data entry is to me is a no no. Um, but it's good that you brought this up, okay? Because it it has the word volunteer there, but try to do something that that is related to the community, okay? Uh, if possible. Mm. Okay, um, <coughs> question from Noel. I think you have sent me this message before, right? Okay, no, um, Okay, you want to do teaching, uh, teaching of students, but the major focus is on science, math and science. Um, you need to provide me with more details, no? Is it... Um, because there's this one group, no, not, not our group, but a different group that wants to do tuition. Uh, basically, the... It replace it would replace the uh, tuition instructor. Basically, the students will replace the the, the existing students instructor. Mm. We are not really fond of um, if you replace a goal of. A particular teacher, for example, but you add, you help, you help, uh, you help the teacher in some way. Um, it's recommended if it's IT related, but if you can't find anything uh, that is the major is IT, then yeah, uh, I think you can do a project where the focus is on math and science. But um, if possible, do provide more details. Who, who is the uh, collaborator that you're engaging with? Okay, no? Okay, Akram, long term or short term? Ah, uh, it can be both. It can be a long term project or a short term project. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jeb. 
Does the NGO that he approached need to be registered? Mm, if possible, um, approach uh, an NGO that that is registered. Okay. Um, because if if something happens, okay, if it is an association registered uh, um, with the uh, ROS, for example, then we can do something that is we may be able to 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 act uh, formally if, if if something happens. But um, but do you really know the NGO or? But they, they may be exception because I think NGO should be registered. If they, I'm not sure if is it a new NGO or the NGO has been around for quite some time. But I believe an NGO should be should should somehow uh, register. Um, Okay, Chen. Uh, but isn't helping a company developing a database system is kind of volunteering? Um. If you, I think it's a different thing if you help a company um, versus if you are helping a community. Yeah, a company, a company, a company needs to bring in profit. Okay, um, so the database system somehow would allow the company to gain profit, then I think that's um, that's not something that we want. Okay, if, you, if you help uh, maybe a small maybe a small business uh, from uh, manual work to uh, mm, you digitalizing the workflow of a small business, then that may that may that may be done. Because if you if company developing database system is is something like a, a paid job, okay, it's a paid job. I mean. I don't think it's, it sounds nice, don't you think? Mm. This all depends whether the database, is it a system that the company is going to deliver to its customers? or a database that the company would use for itself. But I would prefer if you if you want to approach a company, approach a, a small business or um, something that is uh, related to the community. Okay, Rafi, does it have to be Malaysian-based NGO? It can be outside of Malaysia because we do have in our group who is currently overseas, not in Malaysia. So if you want to approach an NGO that is based outside of Malaysia, then um, you can. But please ensure that the NGO is 
properly is a is a legitimate NGO. We don't want um to be involved like similar like a Macau scam or something like that. Mm, Chen, yes. Mm, if it brings a uh, profit to the company, if you develop it, so it's basically free labor for the company. So, yay. Uh, so you have them develop a system basically, and then they would then sell the system. And they would gain money, but you won't because you you are not you are not supposed to get paid uh, doing the service. Okay, I see King fundraising. I think I have answered this question before. Okay. Hmm, pernah tanya fundraising? Um, yeah, Azik. Yeah, you can do fundraising. You can do fundraising, but ensure um. So whatever uh whatever activities that whatever activities that uh you're going to propose whatever project that you're going to propose there's a learning aspect to it. So you learn something and you do. You learn something when you do a project. And if possible, the project is done together with the with the NGO that you're going to approach. But due to the current COVID-19 situation, we may um, you know we may accept um, uh, we may accept um, any reasonable project from you. It is difficult to um, it's difficult, sometimes it's difficult to do things entirely online. So fundraising, yes, but ensure that, but you need to be uh, to be specific on how you're going to do it. Um, and the cause, uh, for what purpose, um, and would the target group or the NGO will also be doing the fundraising as well. Okay. Uh, it's good if you do things together. Okay. Good if you do things together. Okay. Um. Okay, uh, in the meantime, I, ha I have created. So if you look at your team space, okay. If you look at your team space. So I have created the uh, uh, private channels here. So this is for group number one. So group number one correspond to the first group here. So for example, click by click is uh, TG1. So I have I have physically I have added the I have added. So for example, this is click by click. Okay. Um, so if you want to meet among yourself. Okay, if you if you want to set a meeting with me to further discuss your project, so you can do so using me. Yeah. Okay, or you can converse with each other in your private channel. I created. So I will amend this based on the information that you that you have pro pro provided to me today. But this is one of the means where you can use to communicate with each other. Uh, okay, group number three. OK, 
Okay, uh, Zachary Oops, Zachary's group. Please, um, please uh, put a suitable name. Please put a suitable name for your group. Okay, we will the army. Okay. Um, uh, whatever lah. Okay, uh, number six. Please put a uh, proper name for your group. Okay. Since you have time, please do it immediately when you have time. Okay. So after this, you will be inundated with group assignment lah, with test lah, with itulah, inilah, right? Before that, inilah, itulah. So please, um, uh, put a name for your group. Okay. Uh, propose uh, title. Um, uh, please let me know. Please let me know what you want to do first. Okay. Before before you proceed with your with whatever that you want to do. Okay. Please let me know what you want to do first before you proceed. Uh, with your project, okay. Tadi tahu saya dulu nak buat apa sebelum uh, teruskan dengan project. Okay. So I'm going to go. So, okay, but have you found a suitable project that you want to work on? Okay, Munir. I believe you are the group leader for Okay, but it. So have you So Munir, have you identified a Sulam project that you that you want to work on? Uh no. Uh, Doctor, can you hear me? Mm, yep. Uh, so for that, uh, I actually have some a few ideas, but I want to discuss with Doctor further in the uh, Microsoft team. Is it possible if I discuss further? Because I have some a few ideas that I uh, that we uh, have come up, but I'm not sure if either of the ideas is possible or not. So. Uh, Mm. So I want to discuss it with Dr. Yeah, in the you want group. To discuss it. So at yeah. the moment you don't have like, any concrete ideas yet. Is it? At the moment you don't have you don't have anything uh, concrete yet? Uh, actually we do. Mm. And um, one of it is actually fundraising, as uh, Ashikin have asked in the group chat. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. uh, that is uh, one of it. Alright. Um, Bang Jago. So Bang Jago, what about the different? Can you hear me, Dr? Can you hear me? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, for now, we already have a NGO, mm -hmm. but uh, we still don't know how we can help the NGO. Mm -hmm. At the moment, we decided to make a website, but we're not sure that the NGO can commit to uh, maintain the website. Mm. But they really want a website, is it? The NGO wants a website. Is it, Kayu? So you have identified that um, the NGO wants you to develop 
a website for them. So, are you ready there? Yes, I am. I can't, can't seem to hear. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, yes. Now we we agree on a website, but we're not sure that the NGO commit to pay the pay the monthly monthly maintenance cost of the website. So. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, so this website is the, the company or is it NGO, is it? NGO. Yeah, so the NGO uh, really wants a website for, for their NGO, is it? Yes, and now, now we, we agree on to make a website, but we still uh, haven't interviewed the NGO yet. Oh, okay. Tomorrow we will interview the NGO. Hmm. Right. Okay. Mm, so at least we have something. Okay. Thank you. Um, provide a name. Provide a name to you. Okay. Jeff. Okay, Doctor. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, so our group uh, decided to make fundraising using mm -hmm. for NGO using social media. Mm -hmm. uh, for now, we have discussed and list out five NGO, but we haven't decided yet which one we want to choose. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's our idea. Mm -hmm. So, so two fundraising activities so far. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Who um, is five? So, who is the group leader for your group? T D five. Uh, so we actually came up with two ideas. One is quite similar to the fundraising. Basically, we want to make a like social media awareness campaign for the for the organization through maybe social media advertising or like to spread to create awareness through in using social media. Then another idea is to use. Uh, uh, application called Scratch, which provides a uh, block coding. It's like teaching students how to code, primary school students. It's, it's actually not a coding platform, but it's a, step, it's a stepping stone, it's a stepping stone for the student to try out coding in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, but we, we still have not found any NGO or any school to partner up with. Uh. So we're still thinking about it. But if, for the... Ah, hmm? uh, yes. But for the uh, awareness program, so for that, we have uh, identified uh, an NGO. Yeah, for that, for uh, the, we have not yet. We just like have a rough idea. Uh, that, that's we, an idea. Okay. we have yet to decide which, which idea to mm. actually execute. Okay. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. The second, yeah, both are both seems fine. Uh, the second one, um, uh, yeah, different from the others so far. So you can try to yeah, continue finding uh, an NGO that you want to do. Thank you, Juan. It's five o'clock. Group number six. Well, who is the group leader for group number six? Uh, it's me, Doctor Kaifan. Ah, okay. Kaifan. So, have you um, discussed with your group members what you plan to do? Uh, currently, we have two ideas, but uh, the first one is helping uh, the NGO with their database management. But the NGO is not Malaysian, it's uh, based uh, in Indonesia. Mm-hmm. And the second one is helping uh, with uh, helping the NGO with their website. But for the second idea, we haven't find uh, the NGO. So, mm-hmm. but for the first one, uh, you have approached an NGO that is based in Indonesia. Uh, yes, but we haven't contacted further. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So you're familiar with the work done by the NGO, or have you approached the NGO before previously? Uh, we we just uh found it uh online. It's mm-hmm. called Blood for Life. Basically, it's blood donation. So, but we haven't contacted the NGO yet. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. Right. you have something? Okay. Uh, thank you, David. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. Uh, you can also provide a name for your group, yeah? Okay. Okay, doctor. Mm. Okay, uh, Hadith. Mm. Hadith. So, I suppose you are the, uh, the leader for teams, for the good teams. So have you identified the project that you're going to work with? Or anyone from the group? Uh, the, uh, I'm the... My, my chief is absent because he got uh, things to do. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, so okay. our group already contacted the NGO. Uh, mm-hmm. G-O uh, we are planning to do the teaching with uh, math and science stuff or an mm-hmm. IT related stuff. Mm-hmm. So our progress is yet uh, we have to make a draft for a proposal and then we submit to you. And then if we approve, then we settle down with the NGO. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, Thank you, Thank you for the update. Um, okay, so I think everyone, uh, every group has some ideas that you want to work on. So if you have more than one idea, you can further refine each idea and then um, uh, let me know which one that you, that you want to do. Continue working on. Okay, for the proposal, you may also prepare more than one proposal if you want. Okay. Um, if you decide not to contact the NGO yet, you can prepare a pre- preliminary version of the proposal and you can send it to me. You can send it to me maybe next week. So at least I know um, you can list the potential collaborator. Yeah. 
uh, you can fill in these. You can fill in these information. Except maybe the. Not sure the timeline. Mm -hmm. It's either internally you discuss, then if you have more than one uh, proposals, you may discuss among yourself and then pick one that you want to pursue on. Or if you have more than one proposal, uh, you can let me know um, uh, how you're going to do it. And then we see whether it fits with Sudam. Uh, so far, uh, the thing that you suggested, it can be sulam in some way, okay? um, but ensure that uh, whatever that you develop, it's not going to um, bring like financial benefit to the, um, especially to companies, okay? especially to companies, because it, 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 it seems that they just want uh, somebody to do it for them for free. But so far, the one, uh, the, your proposal seems okay. Um, just to find tune on the, on the uh, potential collaborator the, that you want to engage with. And, and what, what would you learn, what will you learn from your, what is expected, what uh, the things that you expect to learn from your experience. Okay. Um, so any, any questions so far? So just to remind again, so so teams is a bit confusing um, to use, uh, even to me sometimes. But if you end up, then you just go to uh, just click here teams. Go to our particular teams here. So on the left side are uh, our channel. Okay? So we are now at the general channel. So if you click, you can all only see your own group. So if you're in check by group. You can only see uh, Kate Bate and you can't you can't see the other uh, group uh, what the other group members are doing or posting or whatever. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you want to use if you want to need using teams, you can. Okay. Uh, you just I'm not sure uh, what's the view what from from your side. Uh, you can just put meet here and you can you can schedule a meeting. Uh, I'm not sure. Or uh, converse anything here. Yeah. You, you can do that. And I, I will update the members in the latest list that you provided today. Mm. Okay. Um, okay, remember that you need to present your proposal on week five. So that is uh, another two weeks. If you can. Um, if you can um, complete your proposal as soon as possible, so that that would be very that would be very very good. So try to finish this as quick as possible, okay, so that you can move on to um, to other things that you may that you may need to do. Mm. Okay. Um. Any. Any more questions? Any more questions? Any more questions before you end? 
I want to ask a question. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, if the project that we're going to do uh, involves uh, any kind of a budget, so do we need to include that in the proposal? Mm. Okay, what kind of budget? Uh, examples of um, examples of things that you need to put in the budget? Um, actually, I don't, I can, cannot think of one yet, but in mm. case if we do have to spend anything, um, just wondering. Okay, just, just put in, uh, just to, just create a budget uh, section and put so whatever expenses that you expect um, uh, when you execute the project there. Okay. So if you, if you have there's budget involved, please put uh, put it. Um, yeah, I can create a new section. Uh, a new section on budget. Okay. Maybe before the timeline. Yeah. Before the timeline, you can uh, put the budget there. So, any question? Any more questions? All right, thank you, Rate. Um, so we'll see you again um, next week. Okay. So I have scheduled this meeting so that it occurs uh, weekly. So either so how you can join the class is you can click on calendar. Okay. If there's if there's anything there, you can just join. Okay. Like next week, I have already. Uh, set up the meeting uh, for the class. Right. Um, thank you very much. See you next week. If you have any question, you can just send me a private message anytime. Yeah. Brother, can I ask a question? Yes, yeah, do it. Uh, uh, may I know? The project that we want to do, does it have mm -hmm. to involve a list this for the community, but does it have to involve a collaboration with uh, NGOs or a uh, company or anything? Is it possible that we do uh, a project that is for the community, but involve uh, that only but only involve us as the uh, that that executes the project? It doesn't have to involve a an actively collaborative partner and mm. your or company. According to the Silam Playbook, I believe you you do need to uh, engage formally with a, a body or society. So the community may have their own society, okay, for example, so you may approach them um, for the project. So at the so no, you cannot just do it yourself. It has to 
uh, because you need to identify uh, the requirements, right? So if uh, the community, if they have a society that represents them, you may approach the society and uh, ask for requirements from them. Uh, which means they don't have to actively involve in the execution of the project. Is it that? Is that right? Just, just so that, uh, yes, so that we know what, what what they want, and then we can deliver what uh, deliver their requirements. Is that is that right? Mm, the recommended approach. Is well, let's say let's say let's say if you want to do a project, uh, that involves um. Yeah, you know, teaching stuff to uh, a group of a uh, community. Does it have? Does, do we have to find another, uh, an another NGO so that we can collaborate with them for that particular group of community? Um, by that community is represented by who? By the community that you want to to teach. That's Which means uh, the community is is representative of itself. Maybe that it they have uh maybe they have like uh maybe a JKK or something that we can call that that we can deal with them with the uh maybe looking for the audiences or looking for the participants. And then mm. that that's what I'm asking. Do we need to have like another uh partner that deals with the uh uh that that have to work with us in delivering the tutorials. No, no, no. Um. So the community that you post is represented by, like you mentioned, maybe a JKK, right? So that's the that's actually the your collaborator. Ah, yeah. uh, I see. Okay. That is your so whoever whatever NGO that you are posting that is your collaborator. And then. You need to work with them to identify what they want. So, so in that sense, the partner actually means uh, a representative body of the targeted community. Is that right? Yes, yeah, correct. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much to the rest of you. There's no more questions. Boleh. Boleh end the, the hang up. And see you guys next week. Okay. Okay, bye. Bye bye. Bye. See you next week. Thank you, Doctor. Okay. 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 See you next week. Thank you.